Coming in at number 5, we've got Bachelor number 1. For all of you lonely hearts out there, fret not, there is a lovely bachelor just for you. As long as you don't have trypophobia, he could be your dream guy. Just look at this moral mushroom looking dude and imagine your life together. As a sharp dresser and quite photogenic, this potential hunk of love is a treasure trove of wonderful traits. For example, he loves to cook. Big on Italian food, he often does his best to learn new recipes and cooks from home quite often. So you foodies out there, he could be quite the catch. That insane dome goes well with the type of food too. You could easily mistake that head top for a big mass of spaghetti or maybe a terrifying incarnation of Pizza the Hut. His hobbies include reading, watching movies, and of course, smelling the black moss that grows in the corner of his basement. Who doesn't love a good sniff of the subterranean gunk from time to time? Help, he'll probably share if you come and visit. This next fact might come off as a little odd, but he also loves bird watching. In his profile, he lists amateur ornithologists. So for those looking to try something new, this could be it. Plus, and some folks are gonna love this, his head just won't stop growing. All that pulsating flesh up there keeps increasing in size. He's got four visible mouths now, but that could very well go up at a moment's notice. There's always more to love. Plus, once you meet him, he'll never leave your dreams. This is the kind of dude that comes along once in a lifetime. Now, you could go with Bachelor One right now and live happily ever after. Or maybe wait and see what the next lucky contestant has to offer. Is it better to stick with what you know, even if it's an eldritch monstrosity? Or will you delve into the unknown and accept all of the terror that comes with it? Find out next time on Weird, Horrifying Bachelors from the Mind of a Madman. What kind of cuisine will the next guy prefer? Coming in at number four, we've got The Thing. While the inspiration for this creature seems to be the John Carpenter classic, The Thing, it is still a brand spanking new interpretation of the alien life form. Accompanied by the caption, man is the warmest place to hide, it's a callback to a famous quote from that legendary poster. You know the one, the parka with all sorts of light coming out from her face should be. I usually have it behind me, but not today. So while looking at this eerily similar interpretation, one can see the similarities. However, the attention to detail here is incredible, it adds a whole new layer of creepiness. The blue tones and winter jacket are still there, but it's a totally different vibe. First of all, the stuff coming out of the hood isn't just blocks of light anymore. Nope, it's some sort of fleshy tendril, which to anyone who has seen the movie will probably cause some vivid flashbacks. Memories of all sorts of different thing iterations come to mind for sure. Then look a little closer at the parka itself and you might notice some additional spooky stuff. The hood takes on some extra monstrous qualities, seemingly a little polar bear-esque or maybe even yeti-ish. The fact that it's even a jacket with the hood up is hard to guarantee once you start looking at the whole picture too. The form of the entity becomes more muddied near the bottom of the frame. Is this because of the heavy snow making visibility go down, or is it because the actual shape of the creature is less man, more beast? It's an expert reimagining of an iconic image that works on so many levels. And even though it would be super cool to see what was hidden behind the hood, I'm not so sure I'd want to find out what horrors await in the darkness. Sometimes not knowing is better in the end. Although if I was a member of an Antarctic research team and noticed some odd behaviors and even odder creatures, I might have to buck up and find out for the safety of everyone, you know? In at number three, we have Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo appears to be a human girl wearing a bear mask. In reality, she is a demon bear. She was once a human girl around the age of 13. She was bullied and outcast by the other kids. Tired of being bullied and ignored, she stayed in her room. Weeks passed, then months, she slowly lost her mind. She would draw pictures of this bear. She did not understand why. One day, she heard the kids outside playing. Their laughing drove her mad with anger. She drew herself a bear mask and went outside to confront the kids. She screamed like a bear at them. At first, they ignored her. She charged them with a knife. The kids laughing turned into screams as they tried to flee. She followed them one by one, leaving no one alive. These brutal acts did something to Yo-Yo. She was not human anymore. She had unleashed an evil. The mask could no longer be removed. It was a part of her. From that day, she never returned home. She has a need inside of her to get revenge on every person. She was on the run and would attack any person who crossed her path. She wanted revenge for her her childhood that was taken from her. She does not have any of her humanity left. She no longer needs to eat or drink or even sleep. She's smart enough to lure people away using candy or toys, although her whereabouts is unknown. It is thought that she prefers abandoned forests and buildings. It is said that she has traded her knife for poison candy after realizing how easy it is to trick people into taking it from her. She also started taking out her anger on adults, those who stumbled into the building she was inhabiting at the time. Although she would save her vengeance from anyone who was not afraid of her. If you were 
to show any kind of kindness or just not being afraid of her appearance, you might be lucky enough to keep your life. Although it has been many years, she has not aged. She will forever remain a little girl looking for revenge. She has gotten skilled in evading capture. This could be a lesson on not bullying. You don't know what they might do for revenge. In at number two, we have Bell Ringer. Little is truly known about the bell ringer, most things are just a theory. They are believed to be a relative of Siren Head, although this has never been confirmed. The bell ringer appears to have a human like figure, with no skin, their human like skeleton is held together by what appears to be a webbing or mucus like substance. Although the body looks somewhat human, the head does not. The head resembles a school bell. It is unclear how such creatures are created, but they are terrifying to look at. Bell ringer has many abilities. They hunt in packs, destroying in their victims, and then surrounding them. They are also able to camouflage themselves with ease, having such a small see-through skeleton they are not easy to see. They do appear to be intelligent due to their hunting methods, they seem to understand human behaviour and how to trap them. They also use the bell on their heads to disorientate their victims. Once trapped they will ring their loud deafening bell. The sound is unbearable for the human ear and they will often drop to the ground in pain. This means they are unable to flee their fate. This is why there is little known information on them, most who encounter them either die or are driven mad by the noise ringing in their head. There have been attempts to stop and trap them, but they appear to have no obvious weaknesses. If you were able to locate them, it would be hard to get close enough to trap them without first being disoriented. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Siren Head. In the top spot today is Siren Head. Siren Head is a huge 40 foot humanoid creature. It was a near human skeletal frame covered in mummified flesh. Sitting at the top of his body where a head should be is a pair of sirens. The sirens are capable of emitting noises that can reach miles in every direction. They are capable of creating various sounds from mimicking human voices to sirens and broadcasting radio frequencies. It tricks people into its grasp by mimicking the voices of loved ones it has already taken. Due to its huge size, it can travel large distances easily. Once it has you in its sights, it is hard to avoid capture. The first sighting of Siren Head was in 1966 during a family vacation in the Arizona desert. They were able to capture an image of the creature. 20 years later, it was seen again by a group of friends on a camping trip. According to one survivor, his friends were taken by a giant figure in the trees mimicking their voices. In total, there are 13 known sightings or encounters with Siren Head. It is thought that Siren Head has been around a lot longer than this, with depictions of it being found on ancient rock paintings in North America. People have become fascinated with the figure in recent years, hoping to see or have an encounter out of morbid curiosity. Not something that I would recommend any of you do. Siren Head is highly intelligent, his hunting methods are clever and most people don't escape him. Not only can he manipulate sounds, but he is extremely strong while also being fast. They are a master of disguise, they often change their sirens to appear like street lights to blend in and go unseen. It is also said that they can remove their head if needed. They have since been included in much of popular culture. Various video games and stories include Siren Head. But dealing with Siren Head is no joke, and if you cross its path, run and hide. Do what you can to get away. There doesn't seem to be a known way to stop them, but they do need to be stopped. They are the deadliest creature on this list and the most terrifying. Coming in at number five, we've got the endangered golden snub-nosed Sasquatch. It already feels like it's been at least a few weeks since that goofy little monkey went viral. To be honest, I've lost all concept of linear time during the pandemic, so anything that happened during the past year might as well have happened yesterday or six months ago. No in between. Thankfully, Twitter tends to timestamp stuff, so we all know when this enormous brooding beast in the style of the funny internet monkey made its first appearance. April 18th, 2021. The Day of Reckoning. If you were one of the many folks enamored by the tiny friend asking for berries and other assorted snacks, you might want to look away. This older, angrier cousin is not looking to be your pal, and it's no longer affable and adorable, and it's not simply going to ask for snacks. I can only imagine this huge, lumbering humanoid waiting outside of a tent in the middle of the night, arm outstretched as if to request that you hand something over, but what does it want? It's not berries, it's not snacks, so what? Well, probably something like your soul, or maybe a pint of blood. And it'll be damned if you don't fork it over right away. For all of these Sasquatch and Bigfoot and skunk ape hunting people tend to do, you've gotta wonder if they really want to encounter the cryptid they've been tailing. Like, let's leave these majestic and horrifying creatures alone, yeah? Otherwise they might beat us to death. God, just look at the thing. The perspective alone tells how gigantic it is. With the light hitting it like below the knee, it's a sight nobody wants while hiking through the bush in the dark. Just picture looking through the window of a cabin and seeing this thing lurking among the trees. That's an image nobody is scrubbing from their brains anytime soon. 
Good lord. Let's hope the next few monkey encounters are just as pleasant as the original viral post, because if they start looking more like this, we're all in trouble. Give it a few more years and the Sasquatches will be out in droves. Coming in at number four, bird. Well, it can't be that bad, right? It's just a bird. We've lived alongside these winged creatures for years, and the worst that seems to happen is that someone will get dive-bombed every once in a while. Maybe an ostrich will get extra aggressive, or some chickens will relentlessly peck at someone's ankles. But those birds, they've got nothing on this. Introduced with the flavor text, farms left abandoned, their fields overgrown, something moving through the fields nearby. Birds congregate on the land in worship. This prompts a whole lot of imagination, now doesn't it? Why did the farmers abandon their fields? What evil presence inspired that major life change? What's moving out there? The birds or other scarier creatures? Now, if you look right at this thing, you'll find that there isn't much likely to be scarier. Just hanging out by a decrepit tunnel covered in lich and another dangly haunted house decorations, looking back over its shoulder at whoever's interrupted its strange rituals in the dark. Ugh, it kind of looks like a huge bird slash human fetus with those awful red eyes. And the multiple deformed little wings on its back really sell that idea. So how did this thing come to be? Is it an experiment between bird and man gone wrong? A demon summoned from the nether realms? Regardless of how it got here, I'd really rather it just went away. At least you can almost guarantee that you'll avoid it by staying out of an abandoned farmer's field, right? But some folks just can't seem to consistently do so. Hopefully they're content with just going about their rituals, ignoring any new presence as best they can. Coming in at number three, we've got Mr. Mask. Sometimes you've just gotta show your support. It's a trend seen in all sorts of different horror communities, but is especially amusing when applied to some of Trevor Henderson's creations. Instead of reacting with shock and disgust to a creepy crawly creature that stalks the night, why not do your best to boost it up? At first, you might see a creature like this wearing an uncanny valley humanish mask and think, oh my god, I gotta get out of here. But then, you see the caption, he made his own mask this time. Oh, this monster likes to craft. He made a mask for himself and wants to show it off. Even if it is an unsettling facsimile of the human form, at least he's trying. Gray skin, cracked surfaces, overly detailed teeth, and a pair of dead, painted on eyes, but hey, he made it himself. Give a little credit where credit's due, right? So while seeing this image out of context might induce a full body case of the shivers, the replies to this picture on Twitter are all folks saying how proud they are of the hard work Mr. Mask put into creating his face covering. You gotta wonder what's under the mask though. That pitch black silhouette barely visible in the darkness supports a different face than the one we're seeing in the moment. What inspires this thing to cover its face? Is it too scary for human consumption? How could it possibly be worse than the face it made for itself? Have we seen this creature before, but wearing a different visage? Coming in at number two, we've got Bad Dream. Nightmares have plagued folks since the dawn of humanity. There's no escaping our subconscious fears, especially when we're dreaming. However, most folks tend to dream about missing the bus before a big job interview or showing up to an exam wearing nothing but their underoos. These stem from real life, everyday fears, failure, public embarrassment, performance anxiety, and more. So what does it mean when you see something like this in a dream? Did you see it somewhere in real life first? I don't know what's worse, conjuring up something like this as shorthand for whatever problems plague you, or actually encountering it in some capacity before having it visit your dreams. This is one of Trevor's pieces that involves both digital photography and digital painting. He's inserted this creature into an actual photo, making it feel extra real, or extra surreal. The empty room on its own would be unsettling, giving off some back rooms vibes. Imagine being in a place like that even without a monster in the door. You'd definitely think twice before exploring, right? Scroll a little further in the thread and you can find a much more detailed rendering of this figure too. Is that a human skull or some sort of alien form? It's definitely wearing some sort of button-up coat, so we know it likes to keep warm. And finally at number one, the Placer County Anomaly. More of the world is photographed today than ever before. There are countless camera-laden vehicles, drones, and satellites capturing images of every square inch of the Earth. Google Earth has managed to map pretty much every inhabitable area of the world. Folks can hop online and see whatever street they want, right at ground level, in 3D, 360 degrees. But some of it is off limits. Faces are blurred, license plates are censored, and unspeakable horrors are redacted. According to the caption on this one, eight people were found dead near the Homewood Ski Area in Placer County, California. Folks scoured security footage, but most of it was unusable or unintelligible. However, for a moment, an anomaly was spotted. Resembling a caco demon from Doom or a gigantic sky meatball with a multi-tiered tooth-filled mouth, this thing floated above the censored area for a few moments and then disappeared. 
Upon further rewatches of the footage, the creature did not reappear. Looking at the original image posted by the California Landscapes bot, a lot of the mysterious intrigue is still there. For some reason, half the image is totally blacked out with an additional rectangle of landscape removed without content. Adding this floating ball of flesh and hatred makes the whole thing much creepier, but let's be real. Meatball or not, you want to know what's behind all that blank space. There seems to be more and more wicked horror art popping up every day. Trevor is one of the many super talented creators out there, so pick a starting point and explore. Find some new stuff, share it, and revel in the unprecedented flow of awesome spooky stuff. Coming in at number 5, we've got Long Horse. To be honest, I didn't even consider Long Horse for our first video. The lengthy lad doesn't exactly qualify as monster in my eyes, they're definitely more friend than foe. But hey, I think there were at least a dozen requests for our equine interlopers, so I'll include the stretchy soothsayer this time. Admittedly, Long Horse is a very scary creature to look at. It has a horse-like skull that always seems to be floating in the air. The skull is supported by a seemingly infinitely long body that tends to bend and twist at impossible angles. Nobody's ever seen a Long Horse end. The long, constantly cracking neck will always disappear behind something before anyone can get to the source. It doesn't follow the rules of linear space and can really appear from anywhere. If this wasn't a friendly fellow, it would be pretty terrifying, but thankfully Long Horse smells like cinnamon and wants to be of help. Ancient depictions of this creature show it helping out humans, often protecting them from danger and warning them of impending disaster. So it's been around for a while and often lends a helping hand to those who might need it. It even enters dreams to do so at times. The non-linearity of its movement seems to mean that it can teleport to different locations to warn of doom. Some say that Longhorse is Siren Head's eternal rival, with the two creatures at odds about how to treat humans. Siren Head being a murderous lunatic, and Longhorse attempting to keep folks alive. Still, it's hard to look at a spatially anomalous creature with a loudly cracking neck and think, friend. Coming in at number 4, we've got Big Charlie. Anyone who has witnessed footage from a factory farm or something similar will feel this one a little extra. Big Charlie is a fleshy abomination that's always growing. It was discovered after escaping the slaughterhouse where it was being held. Somebody reported a mangy cow wandering the highway to animal control, and when they discovered how strange it was, the SCP Foundation got involved. When Big Charlie was born, the folks working the slaughterhouse didn't know what to do. It was extremely gross looking and didn't really react to anything. They tried killing it, first with a cattle gun, then by cutting its throat. When neither worked, they literally butchered it where it stood. Cutting off all the flesh until only bone remained, the butchers assumed that it would die soon after. But instead, all the flesh grew back. Big Charlie can't be killed. Some accept it for what it is, free utility grade beef. Some avoid it as best they can because it's not natural. And some, like the owner of the slaughterhouse, worship Big Charlie as a religious idol. To each their own, I suppose. If being fed mysterious, ever-regenerating meat doesn't concern you, Big Charlie's appetite might. It's not generally dangerous to humans, but does have a wicked hankering for just about everything. It'll eat hay, grass, bricks, even other cows. So don't get too close or you might end up being assimilated into the meat monster. From time to time, flesh will simply fall away from Big Charlie's body. When this happens, the bits and pieces often become creatures themselves. There's the lamb, which takes on the appearance of a tall, four-legged sheep consisting entirely of flesh. And then there's Nugget, the lovable little meatball who skitters around and eats crackers. How nice. Coming in at number three, three red strings. Now, these apparitions have shown up a few times over the years, but the latest iteration could be the scariest. Mannequin-like figures that seem to float in the air, these are the perfect Uncanny Valley companions. They've been seen all over, from floating in the sky to hovering just below the ceiling in grubby basements. Although they tend to be in different places quite often, they're always a bad omen. Pallid and dilapidated, these humanoids never have anything resembling heads. Instead, they're supported in the air by three red strings. These supports allow them to sort of float wherever they are, resulting in a very foreboding atmosphere. They've been spotted way above cityscapes, startling folks on the ground, and more recently were discovered by a team of first responders in a suburban home. The story gets a little muddy though, as it's reported that a few hours later they had disappeared. But who disappeared? The mannequins or the first responders? Maybe both, right? All I know is that I would not want to find myself facing down these horrid beings late at night. Although, I am curious about where those red strings lead. Not so sure I'm willing to go ahead and find out though. Coming in at number 2, we've got Mr. Bag. Oh, oh no. 
<laughs> There's something extra upsetting about a creature that seems to consist of large black plastic bags. Some claim that this atrocity smells like hot garbage, which is probably a pretty accurate description. First appearing back in December, Mr. Bag has paid a few visits to the good people of the internet. The first image of this creature depicts it casting a shadow against a wall with some crude drawings on it. Lore is always appreciated, and it seems as though Mr. Bag either likes to draw himself and his targets, or he lets himself be known to a younger individual who then becomes obsessed and starts scribbling that shit everywhere. Apparently this thing has been around for decades, too. Trevor followed up his original image with one of Mr. Bag depicted in a Polaroid marked June 13th, 1993. Hopefully the poor sap who snapped the picture is okay, but I somehow doubt it. Mr. Bag looks like he's at least 15 feet tall, probably more, but it's tough to tell. And according to Trevor himself, he's not nice. Not even a little bit. The pale face and empty eyes poking out of a mass of black plastic is an image that will probably stick with a lot of people. Plus, whatever new details we learn of will probably be extra grisly. And coming in at number one, we've got The Long Lady. Remember Host, the pandemic-themed Zoom call horror movie that released to almost universal acclaim late last year? It took a lot of ingenious planning to make that work, but it was definitely worth it in the end. Experimental, relatable, and definitely scary, it did something a whole lot of people have tried to do for years. Make a webcam horror movie that is good from start to finish. When somebody makes something like that, you know there's gonna be a lot of people looking to work with them in the future. And guess what happened? Jed Shepard, the writer slash executive producer of Host, is working on a new project called Ghosts, and he got Trevor Henderson to design the monster, and Jim Henson's Creature Workshop is fabricating it. All that together sounds like a dream come true. We haven't seen too much of this creature, the long lady yet, but if you head over to the project's Kickstarter, there are a few teaser images. Black and white photos of a London neighborhood have something hidden within, and those with a sharp eye might be able to catch a glimpse of this legendary creature. Ghosts is going to be a real-time live-action horror video game about a team of ghost hunters trying to keep their viewership alive. In order to keep their audience engaged, they decide to investigate an infamous suburb filled with oddball residents and, of course, ghastly paranormal rumors. Players run the show from behind the scenes, making choices about the broadcast that will impact how interested viewers are and the fates of the on-screen ghost hunters. Taking inspiration from games like Night Trap and Phantasmagoria, it'll be a fascinating ride for sure, especially with the team behind it. Plus, the game just about demands that you play it live, meaning that you have to log in right at 10pm to play, and from there, all bets are off. No pausing, no leaving, no nothing. Immersion, am I right? So if you're a fan of Trevor Henderson and want to see one of his creations truly come to life, then this is the game for you. Keep an eye out for new images of the long lady, too. Coming in at number 5, we've got Anxious Dog. Oh boy, this isn't your average canine companion. Definitely not something you want in the house with you, and don't even think about trying to pet its belly. This creature is a pale, semi-humanoid that appears to be hanging out upside down. It's got no eyes and a big human mouth that sits in the middle of its head. Yuck. It has a habit of lurking around just outside of door frames. You look at it and only catch a glimpse of parts of its body. You never really see the lower half. Most of the time it's been seen walking around on its hands with the eyeless face contorted and twisted to face whoever's unfortunate enough to witness it. After all this description, you might be wondering, why is it called Anxious Dog? Well, it's not because it looks like a dog. No, it's because of the sound it makes. If this thing is nearby, you might hear the sounds of nails clacking against the floor. You know, like that of an anxious dog pacing in the hallway. Yuck, I don't want to imagine what its feet look like then. Even though it lurks, don't take it lightly. This beast has been known to get quite violent very suddenly. One moment it's hanging out just outside your reach, the next it's tearing you to shreds and smiling with its awful face mouth. If you hear some clicky clacking and you don't have a pet, get the hell out of there. Coming in at number four, we've got Watchtower. While a good deal of Henderson's creatures are scary and malevolent, a few manage to be guardian spirits of sorts. Longhorse is a particularly well-known example of this, and today we'll add another to that canon, Watchtower. Trevor posted this cryptid a while ago with the caption, Watchtower, protector cryptid and mascot of a certain small town that chooses to remain anonymous. Pretty neat, right? It appears to be a gigantic creature with horns sprouting from its head, or maybe tree branches. Either way, it gives off the appearance of a forest dweller, which makes sense considering it's protecting a small town in the boonies. But what's it protecting the townsfolk from? If you need a monster on your side in order to stay safe, you can probably bet whatever you're going against is pretty scary. Sheesh, maybe we don't need to think too deeply on this one. Even though it's friendly to those outside of the ones it wants to protect, Watchtower can be downright dangerous. Its size alone is enough to stop folks in their tracks. Add in the antler branch things and the ability to take down some horrid beasts and you'd better be careful. Prove to be dangerous to those its duty is to protect and get put in the ground. It's just simple logic, right? 
Other renders of this beast seem to show it with four legs and a long neck, kind of giraffe-like. In fact, it sort of reminds me of the forest-dwelling beast from the ritual, which kind of serves the same purpose, doesn't it? It's a little more violent and demanding of worship, but I wouldn't be surprised if these two were cut from the same cloth. If you're interested in coming face to face with this cryptid, start visiting small towns, ask around about their mascot, or cause some dangerous trouble. You'll get faster results with that second strategy, but probably get taken down too. Coming in at number three, we've got the Garbager. If you thought raccoons were a little freaky, then you're not ready for this one. Lock up your trash real tight unless you're willing to come face to face with a monster. If you do end up leaving some rotten garbage out in the open, you might be treated to the sounds of rummaging and foraging. Look out the window and you could see the garbager. This red-faced quadruped is attracted to refuse and litter from yesterday's hunt, if you know what I mean. It's unknown why the garbager's face is red. Some think it's covered in blood, while others say it's just a coloration. Dark eyes and a hole for a mouth are set in the red dome and the rest of its body is a dingy gray. Nobody's commented on how it smells, but I would assume based on its interests that it just smells terrible. But just because it has a horrid odor doesn't mean that it's all bad. Apparently if you leave trash out that it finds appealing, you might be rewarded with a gift. Rotten food is the garbager's favorite. Some of the gifts it's been known to leave for those who donate spoiled supper include shiny rocks, fruit peel arrangements, bones, shells, feathers, bottle caps, foil, and at one point, a singular glove. Huh. I guess it is kind of nice now that I think about it. Like the tooth fairy of garbage, but instead of money, you get slightly nicer garbage. All right, garbager, you get a pass. It still looks really creepy though. I think twice about putting out the garbage after dark. Coming in at number two, we've got the god of roadkill. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Doesn't look good either. I mean, it looks wicked, but I wouldn't want to drive past that on a country road late at night. This thing is hideous and I don't trust those eyes. As big as a van, this giant skinless featherless bird crawls around roads at night using its long skeletal arms. In all likelihood, the god of roadkill may have originated as roadkill himself. He is missing legs after all. Let's consider that face though. The god of roadkill's eyes don't look real. In fact, they appear to be drawn on. That white, sharp, bony face might very well be a mask. And if that's the case, I do not want to see what's behind it. No, thank you. Nobody seems to know what this creature's purpose is though. Maybe it's a memorial figure standing witness to all the innocent creatures splattered across concrete and asphalt every day. Folks tend to encounter it while driving at night and will often crash soon after. Could this be a sort of revenge against the motorists who ran over animals on the road? According to Trevor, the god of roadkill is meant to take souls to the other side. So it could be an agent of death or any number of other underworld servants. Definitely something that you don't want to spot while taking a late night drive. Trevor also says that the god of roadkill is always sad and angry, which makes sense considering that this idol represents all these squashed and splattered beings seen on roadways around the world. And finally at number one, we've got breaking news. While I do know that breaking news can often be scary, I'm not referring to the 24 hour news cycle. This time I'm talking about the gigantic creature walking about leveling buildings and causing general chaos. It's known as breaking news because it tends to be reported as such with terrifying images attached to the newscasts. Nobody knows the origins of these horrid beasts and their goals are a total mystery. The humanoid is big enough to destroy entire cities, walking about like a kaiju and flattening buildings. In fact, in many of the places it's shown up, nearby settlements end up being totally abandoned for fear of it returning. Even if there were only one, we'd have plenty to worry about, but it is likely that there are more out there. They've been spotted in different areas over relatively large distances, leaving some to speculate that there could be many gigantic humanoids spreading destruction. If this is the case, we're in great danger. Coming in at number five, we've got the smile room, teeth. Any instance of dental demonism just freaks me right out. So the smile room is particularly upsetting. Just looking at the most well-known instance is a terrifying ordeal. Imagine opening a door and it's just teeth on the other side. No nightmares compare. The horror doesn't stop at the visual shock either. It keeps going and going. The smile room was a name given to this creature after the original sighting. Some teens broke into an amusement complex known as Neb's Fun World and wandered around. Eventually they came across a door labeled the smile room and must have opened it up to see what was inside. I've been to Neb's before and I can attest that there is no such room. Now, I say they must have opened the door because nobody really knows what happened to them. A friend was waiting outside and didn't hear from them for hours. He went inside and found one of their phones discarded on the ground. It's on this device that the ever famous image of gigantic teeth taking up a doorway was found. The owner of the phone though, 
was never discovered. Upon investigating, nobody was able to find the smile room at Neb's, but it has appeared elsewhere. It seems that the room itself isn't a fixed location, but a creation of a host. The host being will move from place to place, creating similar false rooms and luring people in. It's unknown what happens to individuals who enter such a room. However, Trevor tweeted a picture of a humanoid entity known as the Smile Room Host, implying that victims may be transformed into beings meant to attract more victims. Teeth and traps. How terrifying. Coming in at number four, we've got the Country Road Creature. Let's just say you don't want this country road taking you home. West Virginia Mountain Mamas beware. This creature feels like the physical embodiment of creepypasta at its core. It's a long-limbed, pale humanoid that stalks the dark, forested roads at night. The only images of it seem to be captured quickly while it's on the move. Anything more would be too much to bear. Uncanny Valley doesn't even begin to describe the pit of terror this beast opens up in your stomach. It has human features, but is entirely inhuman. Often when displayed in a photo, it will have noticed the photographer and turned its grotesque head to look at them. I can't imagine they would have lasted much longer after snapping the shot. The country road creature is known for hunting humans on back roads in its spider-like form, but has also been seen in other situations. Some have claimed to encounter it in cities and even in their homes, with its long clawed hands making appearances on the sides of buildings and in stairwells. The worst bit, though, is that this abomination can possibly take quasi-human form. It's hypothesized that it can shrink down to normal human size and don clothing to trick people into feeling safe. Then, when their guard is down, it can demolish them a Trojan horse for the modern internet era. Coming in at number three, we've got the Meat Grinder. Oh, doesn't that sound nasty? It's actually a little more familiar than you might think, even if it's harder to find these days. We all know Siren Head, right? The super tall, lanky beast with the ability to make pretty much any noise. It eats humans, lives in the woods, it's covered in leathery skin. Well, there's a few variants on this popular cryptid. Yep, we've seen classic Siren Head, we've seen ones that look like streetlights or have multiple sirens, and there have even been ones that shapeshift. But there's a new Siren Head variant in town and it's more fearsome than ever. Known as the Meat Grinder, this thing is terrifying. It's more squat and stout than the stereotypical Siren Head, giving it a shorter stature. Being less tall doesn't make it less dangerous, though. It seems to be covered in some sort of glistening red flesh, giving off the impression of being freshly skinned. It also has blood and other viscera pouring from its toothy siren mouth. And I don't know if I'm confident in calling it its blood or blood from some prey. Either way, pretty gross. It likes to live in colder rural areas, so they can be found up north more often than not. Maybe there's a tie-in with the thing. And to make matters even scarier, the meat grinder tends to be more aggressive than regular siren heads. No blending in necessary, and I doubt it would be good at camouflage anyway. For whatever reason, Trevor deleted this creation and hasn't really addressed it since. Maybe it's part of something bigger to come, or maybe it's simply too dangerous to leave up. Doesn't inspire confidence. Coming in at number two, we've got 98-8-13. This name simply comes from a Polaroid style photograph taken of a creature. On a dirt road at night, someone caught a glimpse of a red ghostly figure. They snapped a picture with an old camera of some sort and then it disappeared. This photo seems to be the only thing remaining from that encounter. Eerie. In the bottom corner, you can see the numbers 98, 8, 13 in orange text. The rest of the picture seems kind of uninteresting. That is, until you notice the red figure off in the distance. It's not immediately noticeable, but once you see it, you can't take your eyes off it. This thing is just standing there, menacingly. It always seems to have a bit of an unnatural lean to it too, almost as if it's about to fall over, but never does. Multiple pictures have been taken of this odd creature, and most of them show that it has a largely emotionless face. But one in particular that was taken near a body of water really turns the creepiness up to 10. It's standing up straight between two tall, skinny trees. It seems to have noticed the camera and is looking right at whoever snapped this shot. The face is emotionless, but the eyes are especially haunting. Something about this makes me doubt the poor photographer made it out alive. And finally, coming in at number one, we've got Day 17. We discussed breaking news last time, now let's talk about its counterpart, Day 17. Unfortunately, we may have mixed up two when putting up pictures, but I'm sure you can forgive us. Day 17, also known as the Wandering Faith, is a fascinating beast, one that could end us all. The thing absolutely towers over man-made structures and is often unable to have its whole body captured in one image. Usually, its head will poke up above the clouds and out of frame. That's a big monster. Often the beast is accompanied by an emergency storm warning. Whether this means that it brings bad weather with it or someone with a lot of influence wants us to avoid seeing it is up for debate. But weather generation isn't too far-fetched considering the allure surrounding the wandering faith. Take that name for a moment, faith. 
Makes one think of religion, right? Maybe a god? Well, it seems like this beast also ascends people to heaven or something similar in concept. In one of the posts featuring it, Trevor included a caption that says, please stay inside until further notice unless you or a loved one has been pre-chosen. Pre-chosen, eh? Sounds like a rapture of sorts now, doesn't it? Coming in at number five, we have breaking news. This creature is one of the most iconic creations coming from Trevor Henderson, next to the wandering faith because of his appearance, massive size, and overall mystery. History. This creature is terrifyingly tall with a vaguely humanoid appearance, yet looks somewhat twisted and disfigured. Its entire body is covered in what appears to be jet black skin, and his legs and torso look similar to humans just without certain features like hair. This monstrous creature stands over 1200 feet tall and weighs over 4 million pounds, so it could quickly overpower you. His body is very malnourished looking with very thin legs and ribs popping out. His arms span 3000 feet and is much thinner than his legs legs, but pretty much dominate his whole body. The most terrifying feature of breaking news is his crooked head, twisted neck and featureless face with no mouth, eyes, ears, hair, anything. Just by looking at this creature will send chills down your spine. The behavior of this creature is not well known and Trevor doesn't give much information about this creature besides two images which make the mystery of this creature even greater. Just his appearance and mysteriousness makes this one of the most creepy Trevor Henderson creations. One fact has been confirmed about the breaking news and that he is a part of the giants so people believe his behavior is similar to other members of this group. This massive creature is confirmed to be a destructive giant. He wants wanders around looking for any cities or humans it can find and destroy them, as well as any human he deems sinful or unworthy will be killed by this monster. The creature's massive size would easily allow it to cause mass destruction to not only humans but on a city-wide scale, since it has human-like hands to grab people or demolish buildings. Its human-like body would also help it to be an extremely fast running creature and could also crawl on all fours for additional speed. And not only is his jet black skin terrifying to look at, but it helps him stay camouflaged at night. Another very creepy thing about breaking news is that despite having no face, it possesses all normal senses, and it is rumored this creature has some sort of additional supernatural or enhanced senses. In at number four, we have Big Charlie. Big Charlie is a particularly strange creation of Trevor Henderson's because not much is known about the creature. Big Charlie is a large mammal-like creature that resembles some sort of mutant cattle, but also has a beak-like protrusion on the tip of its mouth. Its body is extremely skinny. You can actually see his ribcage popping out along with a thick dark mane that goes from his head to the back of this creature. His eyes are large and slightly bulge out and are white and foggy, so some believe this creature may be blind. According to Trevor Henderson's past Tumblr post, he mentioned that Big Charlie had escaped a meat processing plant, meaning he is some sort of animal hybrid made out of different kinds of meat. Creepy, I know. So many things are creepy and scary about this creature, one being that his location is unknown and he is apparently on the run, so Big Charlie could be anywhere. It is believed that this creature sometimes sheds his meat and those pieces turn into different creations of Trevor's such as Lil Nugget then grows up into the lamb or Void Nugget. It is said that Big Charlie is one of the weakest creatures if not the weakest out of all of Trevor Henderson's creations but it doesn't mean that it's extremely terrifying to look at and could cause harm because he is over 20 feet tall and weighs over 30 tons so it could easily crush you. Big Charlie is known to be pretty harmless to humans but if it feels threatened all bets are off. A fun fact about Big Charlie is he is part of the SCP community and is SCP-4158 by the SCP Foundation. Coming in at number three, we've got bridge worms. Beware those who wear false faces. It's good advice, especially when dealing with these guys. These infrastructure dwelling beasts tend to wear a false face that looks a little like strong sad. Don't let the marshmallowy melancholic mug trick you into asking it what's wrong though. Get too close and they'll show you their real face. The skin pulls back from their front facing visage and reveals quite a horrific fleshy mess of sinew and teeth. It's really quite disturbing. A bridge worm will spend a good deal of its time lurking under bridges, as the name implies. They keep their sad face on, hoping to lure unsuspecting prey in. Once the prey is close enough, they will devour them and set up for the next victim. Of course, as the bridge worm continues to find prey, their reputations grow. This means that people might start avoiding their bridges, leading to depleted food supplies. If this happens, bridge worms have been known to leave their lairs under cover of darkness to seek more nutrition. So it is very possible that one might run into a gigantic white mask wearing predator while out and about at night. It seems that bridge worms become more sophisticated as they age too. Their facial markings become more expressive and their bodies become larger and more muscular. Even a young bridge worm is a dangerous threat. Imagine encountering a fully grown one. 
The more people they encounter, the more they learn about hunting us. Good luck out there. Coming in at number two, we've got Cartoon Cat. Now we're into the truly evil stuff. A lot of the monsters we talked about earlier are creatures of habit. They hunt to live or just because it's all they know. But Cartoon Cat is a sadistic, malicious being hell-bent on causing pain and agony. It's a terror above other terrors. Taking on the form of a huge animated cat, this big-eyed beast is a force to be reckoned with. Often it'll show up in photos where you can only see its cartoonish eyes and sharp, grisly teeth. At first, it only seemed like Cartoon Cat was stalking people, but as more information cropped up, folks started to realize how sinister it really was. Many people have vanished after being followed by Cartoon Cat, and information about these disappearances is hard to come by. In fact, a lot of information about Cartoon Cat in general is redacted and expunged, giving the impression that there's some stuff too terrifying for our sensitive little eyes. Trevor himself ranks this retro creature very highly on the danger scale. He claims that other monsters and cryptids actively avoid it if they know what's good for them, and that a lot of Cartoon Cat's powers come from unchecked limitations. That's not a phrase you want associated with the sadistic monster now, is it? Add in some apparent shape-shifting abilities and you've got a truly upsetting cat. The 30s style cartoonishness extends beyond just aesthetics, too. Cartoon Cat has the ability to warp and bend and stretch and commit acts of atrocious violence, just like cartoon characters from that era. He's malleable, in short. This lets him defy the laws of physics in ways that many other creatures could only dream of. It would be quite the upsetting sight to behold, too. Think about it. If you saw a black and white cartoonish cat shifting and changing before your eyes, wouldn't you want to scrub your brain out with a wire brush? Be honest. And finally, at number one, we've got the man with the upside down face. If there's one Henderson-verse creature that can compete with Cartoon Cat for the position of head honcho, it's this guy. Get it? Head honcho? see myself out. Not only is this man horrible to look at, he tends to enact some of the most heinous evil possible to get his rocks off. The man with the upside down face has appeared near countless tragic accidents and disasters. Car crashes, house fires, train wrecks, you name it, he'll be there. In fact, it's possible that he influences a lot of these awful occurrences. Looking through historic photographs, you're likely to see this fellow in the backgrounds of all sorts of images featuring massive amounts of human suffering. He somehow feeds on these negative emotions, they sustain him. I'm sure once he found this out, he sought to cause more agony than ever before. And I'm sure you already knew this, but the man's face is upside down. The rest of him seems to be pretty normal, but the face definitely stands out. This might not seem too scary, but it is jarring when you pick him out of a crowd. You'll never find him in a real crowd, though. Whenever he's causing trouble, he'll be invisible to the naked eye. It's only afterwards, when photos are developed, that one might be able to see his flipped lid. In the end, the man is a hateful leech. He's been described as a bottom feeder and is drawn to tragedies that occur. I think my favorite description of him comes from Trevor himself, who says that out of all his monsters, the man with the upside down face is the pettiest asshole of the bunch. A glowing review from the man upstairs. Coming in at number five, we have Cartoon Cat. Cartoon Cat is one of the most well-known cryptids. Cartoon Cat is a tall, cartoon-like black feline creature. It has a slender body with white, beady eyes. He wears white gloves similar to that of Mickey Mouse. His teeth are sharp and he often snarls at those he meets. His teeth appear to be bloodstained. Another disturbing feature to the creature are his feet, or rather the fact he doesn't have any at all. Instead of having feet, he he has footless sharp legs. They are like two sharp points that scratch on the floor as he walks. Cartoon Cat can change his size as he pleases, but the tallest he has ever reached is that of a two-story building. We know that he knows his actions are horrific, but he commits them anyway. He is intelligent and knows what his actions mean. This leads people to believe he is truly an evil being. Not only is he evil, but he has a lot of powers making him dangerous. He is a shapeshifter, meaning he can extend and warp his body. He can also be in multiple places at one time. His power is making him near impossible to capture or destroy. He can warp between dimensions. He can also use this to warp his enemy's reality. He doesn't obey traditional laws of life. He can make his body malleable, making him able to get through any space. There is no way to hide from him. Due to this, he is feared even among the other monsters. Trevor Henderson himself has even explained that Cartoon Cat is the most dangerous creature in his collection. Cartoon Cat's goal or motive is to kidnap his victims. There is usually no way for them to escape or evade him. He can trap them in alternate dimensions, where there is no one to help and nowhere to run. Once you have been captured by him, he will commit unspeakable atrocities, all ending in him consuming his victim. Coming in at number four, we have Behemoth. 
The behemoth is an enormous creature, is the largest of all the giants. It's unknown just how large the creature is, as only a fraction of it has ever been seen. It has some unique abilities that the other giants do not, making it the most famous. The one time that the behemoth was captured on camera, you can see how truly giant it really is. Only the head of the creature is visible, but it is already as tall as the entire mountain. It appears the creature is covered in pale white scales, some of which look damaged. It is believed the creature may May have been captured. It might have been stored under the mountain to keep everyone safe from its abilities. Given its size, it is likely the creature was able to break free and find its way to the surface. People have compared the giant's features to that of an iguana. This could mean the giant was created due to experiments or natural exposure to something that altered its DNA. Some believe the creature is from another dimension. His kind somehow figured out how to break through the barrier to our world and invade it. Some say that Behemoth is the ruler of the giants acting like a god figure to them. This makes him more dangerous as he can not only cause great destruction but has an army of giants who follows his command. Due to his enormous size, the behemoth is destructive even when docile. He has the ability to crush an entire city with ease. Monsters this size can also cause huge earthquakes on a 12 point scale. This is enough to bring down even large mountains. The creature is able to travel undetected as it can burrow underground. It's believed they create a tunnel system underground so that they can move around as they please. When the creature wants to inflict damage on those around it, it will let out its roar. This causes massive sonic damage, deafening anyone who hears it. In at number 3 we have Good Boy. Good Boy is some sort of dog like creature but definitely not as cute. This creature has jet black fur and has a terrifying mean expression with foggy bluish white eyes with no pupils and a gaping mouth with no teeth, tongue or uvula. Along with his other scary features, Good Boy's nose resembles that of a skeleton and has long legs and its feet appear to be stubbed. Good Boy is known to be very evil and can run as fast as a cheetah so if you come in contact with this mutant dog it would be very hard to outrun him. Along with being an evil being, he possesses a toxic bite, sharp claws and harsh kills. In the past, Trevor started releasing artworks of many of his monsters as patron saints and cartoon cat and good boy were one of the many creatures, but compared to the others, they weren't called patron saints and didn't have the sun like symbols behind them like the others do. It is unknown why they didn't have these features and after this instant, some people started theorizing that cartoon cat and good boy are connected. Good boy stalks and hunts his prey, he likes to roam around hotels and residential areas near people's front doors and waits until his victim opens the door before he ultimately kills them. It is unknown what the intention of this creatures are but many speculate that he enjoys roaming around in order to eventually enter people's home to kill them and he usually does these attacks at night. Due to his black fur he can easily stay hidden from his prey. Good boy is also known to reside in North America and that's as specific as it gets so beware if you're living there. Coming in at number 2 we have Bell Ringer. This grotesque creature weighs around 210 pounds over 6 feet tall and looks to have yellowish orange skin. The bell ringer depicts a human like figure and the entirety of this creature besides his arms appear to be a mere skeleton held together by some sort of fully encompassing web like material, possibly muscular tissue or mucus. His body is entirely comprised of uneven ribs due to the pelvis and is connected to a spinal cord and columns that appear to be smoothly bent in a zigzag line starting at the back of the torso, then the front, then the back again. The creature's chest area has a very large and wide rib cage with 8 ribs on one side and 13 on the other. And the ribs on the right side are longer than the left. Strangely, the arms of this monster are connected to the lower part of its chest area rather than the shoulders. They are also not actually connected to any of the other bones, instead being connected to the encompassing body material with another red substance, almost appearing to be glued on. The bell ringers tend to be motivated by hunting humans and consuming them in order to survive. Some abilities and survival tactics he possesses is pack hunting, clawing, camouflage, intelligence and disorientating his victims. The location of this scary creature isn't known but it is rumoured he resides in a half burned abandoned high school. An interesting fact about the bell ringer is that he is rumoured to be a possible relative to the famous siren head but that can't be confirmed. I feel like this creature's appearance alone makes it terrifying, creepy, ugly, scary and terrifying along with his abilities. The bell ringer is one of the biggest threats to humans out of all of Trevor Henderson's creations. 
And finally, in at number one, we have the Pink Man slash Forgotten Baby. This creature somewhat resembles that of a human baby, but much more hideous and frightening looking. Having pinkish skin and a very large head, its torso looks very thin and malnourished, and is considered to be an extraterrestrial figure. The theory is that the bizarre body structure and large head and beady eyes line up with a stereotypical depiction of an alien. It's said that this alien was sent to Earth with the mission to adapt to the environment and thrive in it, and the baby-like appearance may have been a poorly made ploy to get humans to believe they are cute and innocent, but ultimately making it an easier kill to the forgotten baby. This frightening creature stands at over 7 feet and weighs over 130 pounds, so that is a big boy. The most notable and disturbing feature of this baby is its large, bald and fleshy head and seems to be much larger than the rest of the body. His face is completely expressionless, but has large, beady and soulless eyes with black irises taking up the top half of the face. A single, hardly visible nostril appears to be the fusion of two nostrils, are in the centre of it with a part partially open mouth with very large red lips and what looks like blood dripping from it. This is basically a baby from hell. There isn't too much known about this strange creature's behaviour, but we do know that the forgotten baby is a sinister cryptid. The most emphasised ability of this creature is its extreme stealth and quietness, which allows this creature to sneak into people's homes without them noticing until it's too late. It is said this demonic creature thrives killing and eating people, so it constantly is breaking and entering houses to take revenge on people, and impaling them with its skinny sharp legs and devouring its victims. The forgotten baby also has enhanced agility, above average eyesight and has the ability to cause depression to its victims. So for all these reasons, that is why the forgotten baby is number one on this list. Coming in at number five, we have giant puppeteer. The giant puppeteer looks like it was once something close to human. This creature appears to be a tall, skinny, human-like creature. Despite its close to human features, it has the head of a bird complete with a beak. The creature towers over human structures. It is believed to be five times the size of a two-story house, making it absolutely terrifying. His hands also appear to be more duck-like, having four long fingers webbed in the middle with long sharp talons on the end of each finger. You can see the creature's bones as it is covered by a thin blue type skin. The creature's left hand has strings attached to each talon, which what looks like a human attached to the bottom. It appears to control the human like a puppet, hence the creature's name. Not only is the creature terrifying to look at, but they are also dangerous in nature. The puppeteer has the ability to control both living and dead humans. If its strings get a hold of you, it can then control you to trap other unsuspecting people. It also uses its enormous size for mass destruction of towns. It is believed that the giant puppeteer believes it was stranded on Earth to help the worthy ascend to heaven. They will capture and ascend the worthy while trapping and disposing of the others. Although a simple creature, they are believed to have moderate intelligence. They are able to perfectly mimic the humans with their puppetry to be able to trick them. They are believed to have come to Earth via an overlap dimension, meaning it is not easy to simply send them home. Anything of such size capable of destruction needs to be locked up, but you would need to catch them first. In at number 4 we have Mr. Mascot. Mr. Mascot's origins were unknown for a long time. We do now know a few details about how he was first created. It is said that a carnival mascot was doing his job as usual, when one day he died while doing his job. He got trapped in a fire. As his skin and the suit melted, they merged. The suit became a part of him. He was found days later believed to be dead. When it came to doing his autopsy, they were unable to remove the suit. Then when their back was turned, he somehow vanished. He is believed to be dead, but somehow still animated. He now seeks revenge for what happened to him. His appearance is a blue bug mascot costume. The costume looks discoloured and misshaped. He is usually found around carnivals, travelling from town to town to find new victims. He knows how to appear to fit in long enough to find and corner his next victim. Once he is found someone who he wants to kill, he will drag them away and later consume them. He works much like a zombie with little more brain power. Due to him being undead, it is not possible to kill him, not like you would with a usual murderous person. He has avoided capture so far as he keeps on the move. If you want to avoid being his next meal, I would be cautious of creepy mascots and travelling carnivals. Coming in at number 3 we have Misty Guest 1. There are 3 Misty Guests that have appeared so far, each one terrifying in size, but we are going to be looking at Misty Guest 1 also known as the Web Kraken. It can be explained as a spider
spider or octopus like creature. It is over 177 feet tall. It towers over everything. We can see that its body is blood red. It has long legs, much like a spider that no one has ever seen the end of. It appears only in the mist as to not be identified from far off distances. It is assumed due to its enormous size that the web kraken is a giant, although unlike the previous, it is not intelligent. It seems to just roam, causing destruction in its path with no reasoning. Given its name the web kraken, you might have guessed it likes to create spider-like webs for humans to wander into. Once you are caught in its web, it deems if you are worthy. Very Thor-like. If you are not worthy to ascend, it will consume you whole. It can easily devour humans or even large vehicles whole. The creature does have a weakness. Much like spiders, it fears fire. This destroys its webs. If you could create a fire big enough, the kraken would flee in fear. However, no one has ever seen one of these creatures perish. So you can save yourself, but you may not be able to stop them permanently. Don't underestimate the creature. Although it is giant in size, it can move at high speeds. It will sometimes freeze when noticed, but once you let your guard down, it can take a hold of you before you even notice it has moved. Coming in at number 2 we have Upside Down Face. The man with the upside down face could easily be mistaken for a demon. He is a dangerous cryptid who can cause disasters or influence people's actions. His appearance is that of an adult man, with his head turned completely upside down. He is always seen with an eerie smile. His eyes are pitch black like black holes. He has been pictured wearing a black suit with a white shirt and tie. He seems to appear formal. This could be a disguise to try not stand out in a crowd. The origin of the cryptid is unknown, but due to his first sightings being in Budapest, many believe he is from Hungary. His first appearance was in the 1910s. He was spotted around the world between then and the 1960s. Since then, his appearances seem to have stopped. Some believe he has disappeared for good, but there is no way to truly know this. While he was active, he was given the nickname the Patron Saint of Car Wrecks, as well as natural disasters, misery. He is always seen near disastrous events, mostly near car crashes, but sometimes he is drawn to general misery and suffering. This could explain why he was most active during the time of both world wars. He feeds off of the suffering of humankind. There were plenty of that for him to feed off during the war. When there is not enough suffering from him to feed off, he will create misery. He will cause crashes. Some believe he can even create plagues to cause mass suffering. Of course, anyone would notice someone walking around with an upside down face. It is believed his true form is only captured in photographs. You would not notice it at the time, but once the photo develops, you will be horrified to see him hidden within the image. He has been captured on film a number of times now, but no one at the scene saw him at the time. He has also been known to kidnap large groups of people. A whole town can suddenly disappear into thin air like they were never there. It is unclear how he is able to do this or what he does with his victims, but they are never seen again and no evidence of what happened to them is ever found. And finally, in at number 1 we have Siren Head. Siren Head is both a creation of Trevor Henderson and an urban legend. He gained a lot of attention in recent years for being a terrifying villain. He is a 40 foot tall humanoid creature. He has a skeletal frame, body covered in dried flesh. Where the head of a skeleton should be, he has a number of sirens. He can also reform them to look like a street light. Inside the sirens appear to be the creature's mouth. It both creates sound from these sirens and also consumes its victims. His speakers can create various types of loud noises including voices. It can mimic perfectly human voices from its previous victims. It will often use this to pick off a member of a group and then use that voice to lure others into its trap. It's typically known to make an air raid siren noise as well as an emergency broadcast to try and disorientate its victims. Siren Head can travel at high speeds and is very intelligent when it comes to avoiding capture and fighting off any attackers who might try to contain him. He will mostly use stealth to lure people alone so he can attack without causing others to be aware of his presence. Some also believe he is capable of dimensional travel and can disappear as and when he needs to. Siren Head is not a being from our reality. Some say he is not limited by our laws of nature. He can change manifestation appearing different in each victim's view of him. It is not known how Siren Head came to be. Some think he was an experiment gone wrong and others believe he has come from a different world. Some theories say he is an all powerful, all knowing being who is unstoppable in our world. He is a very aggressive monstrous creature. He understands humans but shows no sympathy to their cries for mercy.
Percy. Siren Head seems to be developing and learning how to create the most destruction with his powers. One of the latest sightings and reportings of Siren Head describes the aftermath of him taking out an entire town. In a never before seen tactic from the creature, he burst the eardrums of everyone in the town, causing mass casualties. He left all of the residents behind, meaning he is no longer consuming his victims. This change in behavior is disturbing as no one knows just how much he is capable of.